Hey, Mom. Hey, Flo. How's my favorite daughter getting on out in New York? Everything is swell out here. I've started my new job. I can't wait for you and Dad to visit me. When are you guys planning on flying out again? Well, I need to talk to you about that, dear. Things at home haven't been great lately. Oh, no. What do you mean? Is Dad okay? Are you okay? Well, this is going to be hard to hear. But your father, he's not been feeling himself. How come? Well, he's... Sick, Flo. He's really sick, actually. He was fine one day, and then all of a sudden, he was out in the backyard doing some work to the lawn, and I found him laid out on the grass. I rushed him to the ER, and they said he had a bad liver. He's on the list for a transplant, but the operation and the medical bills are going to cost a lot of money. Money we don't have. Our health insurance barely covers hospital admission alone. I don't know what to do. We might have to sell the house to cover the costs. Oh my god, mom, why didn't you tell me sooner? I didn't want to worry you, dear. And your father didn't either. Besides, you know what he's like. Stubborn as an ox, your old man. We both thought, since you just moved to New York, and you were so excited about the new job, we didn't want you running back home again. But mom, he might die. Do you honestly think a job is more important to me than my dad's health? No way! I'm going to get the first flight back home to Oklahoma. Dad needs us both. But I don't want to scare you, honey. I'm sure he'll be fine. He's a fighter, your old man. If anything happens to dad and I am not by his side, I'll never forgive myself. I'll let my job know what's happening. I'm sure they'll understand. There's something called compassionate leave in this society, and it's put in place for times like this. But what about the money? I don't know what to do about that, but if we knock our heads together, I'm sure we'll figure something out. There's gotta be a way. And if it's not immediately apparent, we'll find it. We can start a fundraiser, or I can get a loan. There's something we can do. Your father's become all awful sentimental about you recently. He kept saying your name when he was in the hospital. He said he needed to talk to you about something, something important. But I think that was just the drugs talking. The doctors pumped him so full of morphine that he was talking to his own mother and she's been dead for a decade. I can't imagine what you must have gone through, Mom, thinking your husband might not make it. To be honest with you, I haven't prepared myself for the possibility of spending part of my life alone. Without him... I guess I better start. Don't think that way, Mom. As you keep telling me, he's a fighter. He'll make it through. He just needs our support, and we're going to give it to him. You're very sweet, Flo. You're the best daughter in the world. I'm so sorry this has happened in your first week in a new job. Don't you dare apologize, Mom. It's not your fault, and it isn't Dad's either. It's just life, and these things happen. I'll let my boss know I'll need to fly home in the morning. I'll be with you soon, Mom. Tell Dad to hold on. I will do, dear. See you soon. Hello, is this Flo Anderton? Yes, who's this? I'm Blake. Blake Fairlight. I'm part of the Fairlight family. Have you heard of us? I mean, I think so, yeah. You're the son of John Fairlight, right? The real estate mogul? Yes, that's right. Oh my gosh, I I'm so sorry for your loss. I saw that he passed away in the news. Yes, that's correct, and thank you. But why are you contacting me? Well, I'm about to come to that. You see, when my father died, the family was distraught. That should come as no surprise. My father was a brilliant man, and despite also being a man of enormous wealth, he was also a very generous man. He gave to charity and he helped build many schools and hospitals. He spent much of his life attempting to bestow upon his children the merits of his legacy. He taught us to be kind and generous with our wealth like him, and that was our intention, to continue his legacy. Well, that's incredibly nice of you. I hope you do that, Blake. But if you don't mind, I've been given some bad news today. It's a family issue, like yours, and I need to book a flight to Oklahoma to visit my mother. You see, my dad's ill. He's fighting for his life in the hospital, actually. You can't fly to Oklahoma, Flo. Excuse me? Why not? Because it is important that you fly to my father's estate tomorrow. There is an outstanding issue to be resolved, something that concerns you. Concerns me? No. I I'm sorry, Blake, but I have a family emergency of my own, and I really need to resolve it. My father is very sick. And if I don't get back to Oklahoma soon, then I don't know if I'll be able to see him before the worst happens. Flo, I wouldn't press this if it wasn't important. My siblings and I are all grieving. We don't want this issue hanging over our heads. We want to continue to grieve our father and prepare for his funeral in the best possible way. Okay, well, would you mind telling me what the issue is then? If it's more important than returning home to my sick dad in the hospital, then please tell me. What is it? As I said before, my father trusted his children with his legacy. My mom is no longer with us, and so he has left all his money to his children. Well, 
That was our understanding when we gathered to hear the reading of his will. So imagine our surprise when our family lawyer read the contents of his will and revealed that we are only entitled to 30% of his estate. Now that's no small number indeed, considering my father's wealth. We assumed, given his charitable nature, that he had left the remaining 70% to a children's hospital or a charity. But no, he had left 70% of his estate to you, Flo. You and only you. Excuse me? Me? Yes, you. Trust me, I was as surprised as you are, until three days ago. I had never heard of you before, not once. That's insane. I have nothing to do with your family. There must be some kind of mistake. Well, I thought that too, so considering I come from a family of considerable wealth, I put a lot of money into finding out exactly who you are. A private investigator found out that you are Flo Anderton of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. That's right. Born to Iris and George Anderton two hardworking blue collar pillars of our good society. So why did my dad leave the majority of his billions to a girl in Oklahoma who has so little to do with one of the wealthiest families in America, I wonder? I don't know. Well, I can't ask my father because he's no longer with us. So I did some digging and he has a file on you, Flo. He has for the past 22 years, every school you ever attended, every boy you ever dated, and then, I saw your house in Oklahoma. Well, the house your parents own anyway. It's a mighty fine house to live in for such unassuming folk. Your father was a mechanic before he retired, wasn't he? He was. And your mother, well, due to her disability, she's barely worked a day in the past 10 years. So why the stately house with the big backyard? What are you saying, Blake? I'm saying that if I was to talk to my father's accountant, he might be able to pinpoint a few discrepancies in his accounts. And by that, I mean, payments made to the Anderton family of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. But why? Why would your father do this? Because I think he was hiding something, something from his past. I don't know what it is, but I intend to get to the bottom of it. But since you are in New York and we are in Florida, there's no resolving the issue until you're here. Resolve? How? How can it be resolved? Well, as much as I'd like to deny you the money that you're owed, I can't. Legally, it's yours. My father stipulated in his will that 70% of his estate was to be left to you and you alone. And so there's nothing I or my family can do about that. But I personally feel as though it is an insult to his memory that you would consider taking the money, considering you have not so much as exchanged a word with him your entire life. But that's something you will need to consider when you arrive in Florida. There are papers to sign, legal papers, before your share of the estate can be handed over to you. So you're telling me in not a very pleasant way, I might add, that I'm a billionaire? Unfortunately, yes, you are. Not just a billionaire, you're worth over $40 billion. $40 billion? You're joking. Uh, how do I know this isn't a prank? Flo, I don't know if you've detected any irritation in my tone up until this point, but let me tell you something. For free. I wish this was a joke. I really, really do. I wish it was a horrible prank, but it's not. My father died and left most of his money to you. A woman who I had no idea existed up until three days ago. I wish someone would wake me up from this terrible nightmare. Frankly, I wish my father had never died so I could kill him myself. Don't wish that. Whatever the explanation is, I'm sure he had his reasons. Yes, I'm sure he did. But never mind his reasons. His billions are yours if you want them. All you need to do is fly out to Florida, and I would bring a lawyer too if I were you. Okay, Blake, well, this has been a weird conversation. I'm not sure if I enjoyed it, but I guess I'll be seeing you soon. I guess so. Goodbye for now. Mom? Yes, dear? Is everything okay? Was your boss okay with you booking some time off to come home? Yeah, she was very kind and understanding, but something has come up. Something so strange that I can hardly believe it's happened. I have to keep checking my phone to see if it's real. What is it, dear? Well, have you heard of John Fairlight? He's a property mogul. He lives in Florida. Well, he lived in Florida when he was alive. Yes. Well, his son Blake, at least I think it's Blake and not some prank caller. Well, Blake messaged me earlier and said that John Fairlight had left 70% of his estate to me and his children only 30% of his estate. I mean, billions of dollars left to me. Why me? I asked him, of course, and he was very rude which wasn't a surprise considering he's an entitled rich kid, but he was lost for an answer. He knew about as much as I did. Oh, but he did say that his dad had a file on me, a creepy file following my entire life, and that he was 
pretty sure he had been sending payments to you and dad. Payments you used to buy your house. Which is completely ridiculous, of course. I know dad worked hard to pay off the mortgage on that house. So I just don't know who to believe. He said I need to get a lawyer and fly out to the Fairlight Estate in Florida and sign papers. I mean, if this is true and I'm a billionaire, I can pay for dad's surgery, all his hospital bills, everything. Do you think it's true, mom, or, or someone is pulling my leg? It's true, dear. What? It's true. I thought and hoped this day would never come. Your father and I have been trying to protect you from the truth your entire life. Truth? What truth? What are you talking about, mom? The truth about John Fairlight. Mom, 23 years ago, your father and I we were having problems. He was drinking a lot, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I had an affair. I had an affair with the man I was working for at the time as a housekeeper. That man was John Fairlight. John was also a married man, but he had his lovers, and that was common knowledge amongst his close circle. Probably even his wife knew. But John was careful when it came to his extramarital affairs. However, I was not. And, well, your father and I couldn't have children, see? Your father couldn't. He took the news pretty hard, and that's why he started drinking. So he was surprised when he found out that I was pregnant with you. What are you saying, Mom? I'm saying that your father, your real father, George Anderton, is not your biological father. That man is John Fairlight. No. Yes, dear, I'm so sorry you had to find out like this. John found out that I was pregnant. He told me to get an abortion. He couldn't let the situation turn into a scandal for his family. But I knew how much George wanted a child. When I told George I was pregnant, he couldn't believe it. He thought you were his. But the more you grew up, the more he had his suspicions. And then he wanted a DNA test. He demanded it. Of course, it came back negative on his end. He freaked out. So I told him everything. He tried to find John, and he did. He told John that his daughter was biologically not his. It was John's. John must have had a change of heart. He kept sending us money, but your father never stopped loving you like you were his own daughter. He still does. You are his daughter. My affair with that man was a terrible and tragic mistake, but I don't regret what came out of it. That was you, Flo. You were the product of my affair. But you have been such a wonderful gift to your father and me. I wouldn't change anything. Not one thing about the past if it meant that you were in my present. I just hope you can forgive me. This is a lot, Mom. I don't know what to say. I just think I need to get to Florida. I need to get that money so I can save Dad. Above everything else, that's the only thing that matters now. I, I can't let my dad die. And now I have the power to save him, so save him I must. Mom? Hey, Blake. Yes? What is it, Flo? That's no way to address your sister. What? That's right, Blake. I'm your sister. And I'm on my way to Florida to take what's mine. I traveled to Florida with a lawyer, I might add, and signed all the relevant documents. I inherited $44 billion in total, and immediately I booked my father, my real father, George Anderton, into hospital for life-saving surgery. The news of my real father was bittersweet. I inherited a lot of money, but I've never cared about money. I only care about my family, the people that actually raised me, who were actually there. My parents, Iris and George Anderton. 